Those of you who are a fan of Sherlock Holmes know that his most notable female adversary was Irene Adler, an opera singer born in all places New Jersey. She made her debut appearance in Sir Arthur Conan, Conan Doyle's first ever short story, A Scandal in Bohemia. And in that story, while a prima donna in Poland, Adler meets and falls in love with the king of Bohemia. And the two do their very best to keep their affair a secret. They exchanged letters and were careful to have only one photograph taken together, which Adler hid in her house for safekeeping. When the king became engaged to someone else, he hired Sherlock Holmes to retrieve that picture, which Adler by this time refused to return. After sneaking into her house, Holmes, being his very clever self, instructed Watson to throw a smoke bomb through the window, prompting the warning call, fire! And as Holmes anticipated, Adler ran to the exact place where the picture was hidden. As Conan Doyle wrote, quote, when a woman thinks that her house is on fire, her instinct is at once to rush to the thing she values most. Forever prompting that getting to know you question asked in small group settings, if your house were on fire, what would be the one thing you would rush to save? It's a popular icebreaker because what we treasure reveals something about who we are and what matters most to us in life. In several different ways, on many different occasions, Jesus posed that same inquiry to his disciples. Early on in their discipleship, he wanted to hear from them what they valued most in life, reminding them that what they valued is a matter of the heart. As he told them, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Knowing what we treasure we embrace wholeheartedly. We do everything in our power to protect it from being lost or being destroyed. At that time, Jesus was talking about our earthly treasure. But as those disciples grew in their discipleship, his inquiry changed. He wanted to hear from his followers how much they valued the priceless treasure they had found. His life in theirs. A treasure that forever changed what mattered most in their lives. Seeking an answer, he tells them two parables. In the first, a man, while going about his ordinary business, plowing a field, stumbles upon a buried treasure. He is surprised by what he finds. And then he's filled with such unexpected joy that he does everything he needs to do to safeguard it, to protect it from being lost or being destroyed. On the other hand, the pearl merchant is on a search 
She knows what she's looking for and ultimately finds what she was hoping to find. And immediately she knows the value. And she too is filled with great joy. Though in different ways of searching, both of them find a treasure. And it's the joy that they experience that prompts them to do everything in their power to secure what they've found. Those first disciples of Jesus knew and experienced the immeasurable value of his life dwelling within them. A life that seized their hearts ignited their imaginations, inflamed their passion, a life that empowered their will. And they too did everything in their power to nourish, to grow, to protect Christ's life within them. And through their faithful stewardship of their own discipleship, we too had discovered that same treasure. Our lives rooted and grounded in our relationship with Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, forever changing what matters most in our lives. And all throughout our lives, as we have nourished, as we have grown, as we have safeguarded and protected his life in ours, we have found those priceless pearls of love, of wisdom, and of grace. So this morning, if Jesus were to ask you, how much do you value his life within your own life? Would we too be able to say that nothing in this life can rival it? Is our joy so compelling that we will do anything to protect his life and to nourish it as a priceless treasure that we have received. Mindful that as we've been talking about for the past six weeks, that a steward is someone who is entrusted with something that isn't theirs to own. Christ calls us to be a faithful steward of his life that is now ours. As he said, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you and I have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then whatever you ask in my name, my Father will accomplish it. Now, as we all know, as is true in any long-term relationship, It's so easy to begin to take our relationship for granted. And it's easy to take our relationship with Christ for granted. When we fail to properly nourish it or take those steps to protect it, our passion grows dim, our joy diminishes. 
We're no longer surprised or astounded by the pearls of wisdom or love or grace he desires to gift us. And then we're no longer aware of the gifts and the wonders we have to share with one another. When our commitment, any commitment, becomes stale, it loses its value. Other people, other things become much more important investments of ourselves, of our time, our talent, and our treasure. And when that happens, we need to go and search to again search for that priceless treasure that we have buried for safekeeping. And for those pearls we once highly valued, but no longer contained. We ask ourselves, what am I looking for? Where can I find it? Where have I misplaced my joy? And it is our risen Savior who promises us that when we go searching, when we go seeking, we will find what we are looking for. And then rekindling our relationship with Christ, the precious treasure, priceless, priceless, that we hold within our own being, we will rejoice exceedingly. We will live in that joy only to be experienced in the kingdom of heaven. And then others will rejoice exceedingly when they meet each of us and say, I want what he has found. I want what she knows. I want who she knows. This morning, let us consecrate ourselves to being faithful stewards of our discipleship, of that priceless treasure of Christ's life within us, that we may remain faithful to being stewards of creation, stewards of our own unique creation, stewards of the Holy Word, stewards of this house of God, and faithful stewards of our own giftedness of time and talent and treasure. I'll leave you as I started with this contemporary parable from our Jewish brothers and sisters. There once was an old man, and all he ever did in his spare time was to sit at the edge of the village and plant fig trees. And people would ask him, why are you planting fig trees? You're going to die before you can eat any of the fruit that they produce. But he said, I've spent so many happy hours sitting under fig trees and eating their fruit. And those trees were planted by others. Why shouldn't I make sure that others will know the enjoyment, the joy that I have found? Amen.